Welcome back to episode 68 of What's the Dill? I'm Pete Dill, and today I want to try something a little different. I want to ease into the topic, and I want to set you up for what I'm going to talk about and not just jump right into the episode. So today I want to talk about Demario Davis, an NFL linebacker, who talks about his daughter's experience with epilepsy and how he connects it to God knocking at the door in our lives. And do we answer that door? Do we get up to answer that door with expectant faith when God is knocking at the door in our lives? So Demario Davis is an NFL linebacker who plays for the New Orleans Saints, and he was at a press conference last week where he said, you know, a lot of us NFL players, we don't get to go to church on Sundays with our families because we play in the NFL. So, so I want to share a word and how God was working my life. And he explained the situation with his daughter. She has epilepsy. It's been very, very hard, but he's been praying like crazy that she's not only healed, but that she's better than before. She had an episode a couple weeks ago and it was really, really hard. They brought her to the hospital. And when they brought her there, he was just praying, Lord Jesus, please heal my daughter and make her better than before. Within a certain expectant faith, an expectant faith. He was feeling God to have an expectant faith, to pray with an expectant faith. She was feeling better. She came back from the hospital that night. She's feeling great, great signs. And at 3 a.m., she knocks on their door and he's nervous because, you know, it's 3 a.m. Thought maybe she's having an episode. But she actually was okay and she just wanted to talk and her speech was great and she wasn't slurring her speech and she wasn't having an episode and she actually was better than she was before. So Demario shares this 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 passage at this press conference in front of all these NFL reporters, which I thought was really cool. And it's from Revelations 3.20. See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and eat with him and he with me. So he connects this idea, this Bible verse with his daughter knocking at the door and that she was actually better than she was before and that God was calling him to have an expectant faith. So an expectant faith that she's going to be healed. Not only that, hey, I want my daughter to be, be to be healed of this epilepsy and this epileptic attack, but be even better than before. And so he was sharing this Bible verse to say, hey, like this Bible verse was a good reminder that I was praying and that God gave me what I wanted and some. But it took this knock at the door he said that we have to, when God knocks, we have to also go up and get the door. We have to answer the door. And that answering that door for him was praying that, hey, Lord, I'm praying with expectant faith. And I thought that was a really interesting, um, you know, metaphor, this knocking at the door. I really like it for a couple of reasons. Because I like it because God knocking at the door in our lives, I think for me, is a good reminder that God is chasing after me. A lot of times I think of prayer, I think of the faith life, I think of on my journey with God, of me calling out to God, God, are you there? God, are you listening to me? God, are, if you're up there, can you hear me? But that's such a good reminder, that Bible verse, and Demario Davis talking about it, that God is chasing after us. Do we believe that God is chasing after us? Do we believe that? Do I believe that? Do I, I believe that God is actually the one chasing after me? I think it's so easy in my life to think of all the things I want and things I'm going after and all my goals and all the things I want out of my life and I'm chasing after them. To think that I'm the one on the chase. I'm the one on the hunt. And when it comes to my faith life, yep, I'm also on the hunt. That I got to find that buried treasure. But God's the one that's actually chasing after me. But why, why, why would, you know, that's crazy. That's actually insane when you think about it. God's chasing after me. God's knocking on my door. But I'm a sinner. I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm not worthy enough. I can't. Why is God chasing after me? That's why our faith is so special. That's why our Christian faith is so special. Because our God chases after us. And that's the big, that's such a difference of why, you know, life with Christ and the Christian faith is so different than the things of this world. All the things in the world that the world tries to tell us is things that we have to achieve. Success, money, power, elected office, job titles, you know, uh, getting, you know, nice house, nice things, materialism, capitalism, respect. You have to earn these things. 
so we live in a very merit-based society where we have to earn the things that we get. Newsflash. Newsflash for all of us. Christ is chasing after me. He's chasing after you. Christ is knocking at your door. Right now when you hear this, Christ is knocking at your door. There's a reason why this video came across your feed. There's a reason why you clicked on this video. You might not know what it is. I don't know what it is, but there's a reason why God wanted you to hear this message. He's knocking on your door. Jesus is knocking on your door and he's got something he wants to tell you and he's got something for you and it's going to be 10x what you think it is. Just like Demario Davis was saying. He was praying for his daughter to be healed. She was healed and some. She was better than before, quicker than before because he prayed with expectant faith. God gave him that. God is knocking on your door and he wants to give you everything. So I feel like for me, that spoke so loudly to me because like the rat race in life can get so exhausting. The things we have to earn, the things I have to earn, the places I have to go, people I have to impress, titles I have to achieve, goals I have to hit, metrics that need hitting, you know, KPIs that need to be met, these endless goals that are put upon me by the world and then I put upon myself that I need to achieve, 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 achieve. I need to achieve things in order to be loved. I need to achieve things in order to be worthy. I need to achieve things to make a difference in this world. And you know, that's the opposite. The chase that I'm after is actually the opposite of a life with Christ. Christ is the one chasing after me. Christ is the one chasing after you. He's knocking on your door. Do you hear that? That's Christ knocking. He's knocking on your door. Did you hear that? Christ is knocking on your door. And, you know, I think, like, it's so easy to think about the constant chase that I may be chasing after God. Chasing, okay, and then finally I'll get there and then you're going to move a little bit more, Lord, and then I can keep chasing after you. But actually, Christ is the one that is chasing after me and I need to receive him. I need to receive him in my life and let go of the things that maybe I'm chasing, chasing after all these things in the world, success, money, time, power, all the, you know, comfortability, whatever it is. I need to let go of those things and receive what God has for me. Because, you know, it's probably going to be a lot better, and it always is a lot better than the things that I want, and it's more fulfilling. Which brings me to then the second part of this, the second part of, of this uh, kind of story and meditation that Demario Davis was talking about, which is getting up and going to answer the door. We have to answer the door. So he says, and the word says who Jesus is and he is knocking at the door. All you got to do is get up. But we have to, we have to be the ones that get up and answer the door. And you know, that, that can be scary. That can be scary to open God to our lives, to open the doors of our heart and let God in. You know, I think so often sometimes, sometimes about my heart, about like, you know, protecting my heart. You know, I think it's very easy for me to think that I have a very open heart for people and relationships, and I think I do. But man, I've also built some walls around my heart. I've also built some walls, you know, a nice fence. Think, 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 think. All right, now I got my fence around my heart. I can just stretch this fence up. And uh, yeah, now I can protect my heart from pain. I can protect my heart from wounds. I can protect my heart from people being mean to me. I can protect my heart from people judging me. I can protect my heart from anyone hurting me. And I know for me, it's so easy. And I've kind of realized over time that like, I do so much in self-protection. Like I do so much to try to protect myself without even knowing it. And I think even when I think about my life with Christ, it's sometimes it's hard for me to give in day after day because I'm scared of where that will lead me. I'm scared of what God is asking for me to do. I'm scared of a big life with Christ. Sometimes I just want a safe life with Christ. And I don't know 
what God has for me five years from now, 10 years from now. And that's scary. That unknown is scary. And so I can protect my heart by not giving in fully, by not opening a door all the way for Christ to come into my life, into my heart. I can just crack the door a little bit like, hey, Lord, who, who is it? Who is it? Jesus? You know, and Jesus is like, yeah, I want to come in. I want to I want to redecorate the whole place. I want to re redecorate your whole heart. I want to redecorate everything. I'm taking everything out. We're busting down the walls. We're bringing this thing down to the studs. I'm going to build it back better than before. But that's really hard. It's really hard to trust Chip and Joanna Gaines. They got to show you the vision, right? They got to show you the plans. They got to show you where they're bringing you for that fixer upper. So that getting up and opening the door to Jesus, that's hard. That's hard. And the, the getting up is not hard. It's that trusting. It's that trusting that God has a better plan for me than I do for me. The letting go is hard. That's the hardest part. That's what I feel like I've really felt recently. That I say with my mouth, Yes, Lord, I want to open up the door. You're knocking at my heart. You're knocking in my life. You're up. I want to open the door and let you in. I say that with my mouth and I believe it. But letting go, the letting go and letting that happen, letting God into my heart fully to be a part of my life, my work, my relationships, my future, my successes, my fears, everything, my heart, my, my wounds, my past, that, that's hard. That's hard to let go. And I want to hold on so tightly sometimes. Sometimes I want to hold on so tightly. And the Lord, he's just like, he's coming for those deep parts of my heart. He's coming for those deep parts of my heart that I don't want to let go to, that I want to hold on to. You know, one thing I've felt recently that I really have been holding on to is like this, this idea that, I've been really holding on to this idea that I only want to do things if people tell me I do a good job at them. I I don't know if I'm willing to do things that, like, I'm willing to do things for Christ if it gets me recognition in the process. Now I can hold out without getting recognition for a while, but I'm eventually going to feel like I need some recognition. And I've been battling with this, that like, you know, my need to follow Christ is like less than my need to be recognized for it. Like, like, will I follow God into obscurity? Will I follow God into this simple life where it's nothing? You know, I'm putting on a camera right now and talking to a camera and doing a podcast. Yeah, I want people to see this. I want this to spread God's gospel. But like, will I do this and continue to do this if not a lot of people watch this? If people look at this and say, oh, it only has 17 views, will I keep doing this? Can I handle that? Even though 17 people hearing God's voice is so, so good and hearing God's voice through me and through this podcast, but can I handle someone saying, oh, like, actually, that's not a lot. This person has more views. This person has more recognition than what you have, Pete. And it's like, I've been fighting with this idea that like, I'll follow God and I'll follow God greatly, but sometimes I expect something in return. I expect a certain amount of recognition in return. And I think it's a, it's, it's a level of self-protection that I want to protect myself and protect my heart that I know I'm doing a good job and that people like me and that people, people respect me for following God. Not just because I'm following God, but because I said, wow, like he's just a great guy. And yeah, I think that's, you know, getting, obviously getting praise and applause and approval, you know, is, is good. You know, it's good to know you're doing a good thing. But I think for me, like, you know, something I've been kind of battling with is like, will I follow God? Will I open a door to God in my life if it doesn't come with praise? Will I open the door fully in my life if people mock it? Will I open the door to God in my life and in my heart? Will I let Jesus enter into my heart if people in my life don't even agree with it? Or maybe people think it's silly. Or maybe people think that I'm sacrificing a career. Am I more willing to please other people or more willing to um, fulfill the opinions of other people and say, hey, that's a good career move. Other people say, yeah, that's a good career move versus Christ saying, this is a good 
God move. This is good for your life, for your soul, for your family. Like, I think my natural inclination is to listen to someone to say, hey man, that's a good career move. You should do that. That decision is a good career move. You should do that. The opinions of others about my career sometimes matter more to me than the opinions of God for my life. And so like this, this battle of me, like letting God into my heart fully is really hard because it's really hard to let go of like all of those, of the pride and the ego and all of the little things and all the little crevices in my heart that want to say, I'll do this for you, God, but I need praise or I need protection or I want to be safe. I want to be comfortable. And I don't know if I trust you fully that it's going to be great for me. But I look back at my life and I look back at my life and God has been with me every single step of the way. So I say to you, as someone who just expressed that I struggle sometimes of letting God fully in all the way into my heart, that when I look back at my life, every time I let God into my life and my heart on a decision or a moment or a season of my life, God gave me a hundredfold what I needed and some. God gave me everything I needed and he gave me more. I look back to my, my wife and my family. I could have never imagined such a wonderful wife and children and um, living situation and job and stability and health benefits and you know that I have right now. Seven years ago, I thought this stuff was foreign. I was like, how could I ever find a wife? Where do you find them? You know, I'm living in a different state than where I grew up in. I'm living in Texas. I grew up in New Jersey. I was living in New York when I met my wife. I could have never imagined such a wonderful, holy woman that loves God that you know is going to be in my life and help build build our family together and do it together with God at the center. Shout out, shout out my producer Tanya. You know I could have never imagined, um, you know the the skill sets that I have right now, like that I've built a skill set in media where I've learned little by little by little by little on my own on the job through met you know mentors that have helped me on, on these jobs like. I could have never imagined the skills that I've built professionally over the past 10 years. You know, 15 years ago, I'd have said like, I don't know what hard skills I have. But now over time, I've trusting in God and trusting that God was kind of pushing me down this professional path that like I could have never imagined these skills that I've accumulated over time. I never left the country before I was 22 years old. But then in my 20s, I did mission work and I went to the Philippines and Ecuador and El Salvador and I visited a friend in Rome and we went to Vienna together and, and then I went to Barcelona twice for work and I went to all these places. I never even left the country before I was 22 and in my 20s I went to a bunch of different countries and I always had that desire to maybe travel and get out of the East Coast a little bit. I could have never imagined that following God would have brought me around the world. Ever. I could have never imagined. When I was a little kid I was always like, am I ever going to leave New Jersey? Following God brought me around the world. I could have never imagined that I played basketball in college. When I was a little kid, I was like, man, I should really want to play basketball in college. I practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced. And I was able to get to a point where I played basketball in college. And I was just a little kid shooting hoops on the street. Like every step of the way in my life, God has brought me things that I've wanted brought me closer to him and it's all been better than I could have ever imagined. I mean, I think I'm 33. I, God has brought me places and experiences and things that have brought me closer to him and better than I could have ever imagined. I could have never have written a better script in my life. I could have never written a better script. If you asked me to write a script when I was 15 for the next 15 years of my life or 18 years, which is crazy, it would have not been this good. And at 20, it would have not been this good. And at 25, it would have not been this good. And at 20, it would have been different and it would have been all about protecting myself and what I want at that moment. So what I say to you is that like, God is knocking at your door. God is knocking at our doors. And when we let him in fully, when we let him in, he's going to give us everything we could have ever imagined and some. And we need to let him in fully and let go. We need to get up like Demario Davis says, and answer the door. So if you're watching this, I'll 
you know, pose, pose the question, pose the challenge to you. Where is God knocking on the door in your heart? Where in your heart is God knocking the door and saying, hey, I want to come into this place in your heart. I want to enter this room and I want to work on you at this place in your heart. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's work. Maybe it's a decision. Maybe it's a discernment. But I promise you God is knocking on your heart and he wants to come in more deeply, more fully. And we have to open the door and just let go. We have to let God do his work. We have to let God cook in our lives. So, you know, that's my, that's my kind of thought on this press conference that Demario Davis had. Shout out to Demario Davis for preaching the good word um, at a press conference in front of hundreds of reporters and got national attention. And, you know, I encourage all of us to, to open the door. Open the door this week. Open the door this weekend. You're going to hear God knock at some point. So open the door. I want to close. I want to try a thing where I close in a prayer. Um, I just felt like that could be a good way to um, end this podcast and kind of like maybe like center um, center the stuff that we've been chatting about. I've been chatting about. You've been listening to. So um, to close, Lord God, please come more deeply and fully into our lives. Let us hear your voice clearly and hear your knock clearly and give us the courage and strength to open the door and let go to let you work in our lives we know that you are lord over our life and when you are lord and we let you be lord that you give us everything we want times a hundred please lord god give us the strength and grace we need to follow you more closely and to let you in more deeply. Amen. Thank you all for watching, listening to this episode. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you all for just like checking in. It means so much to me. Hope to see you soon. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, share this with someone who you think would like it.